ओके वेलकम टू अनदर लेक्चर इन वीक फोर ऑफ मिशन लर्निंग फाउंडेशन विल कंटिन्यू दैट डिस्कशन ऑन लीनियर एल्जिप्र साइड ऑफ थिंग्स हियर इन पर्टिकुलर विल बी लुकिंग एट कॉन्क्रीट एग्जाम्पल दट शोज द यूटिलिटी ऑफ डायग्नलाइजेशन दिस इज द वेल नोन फिबोनेक सीक्वेंस सपोज यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट सम हयर ऑर्डर टर्म इन अ फिबोनेक सीक्वेंस विदउट डूइंग इट इन द ब्रूट फोर्स वे but uh, you are okay with uh, good enough approximations uh, then uh, one can use the linear algebra one can use ideas from diagonalization uh, which is the linear algebra root to understand what the higher order terms in a fibonacci sequence are and that's exactly what we are going to do in this lecture we'll continue the discussion today on similarity and uh, diagonalization with an detailed example which is fibonacci sequence i hope everyone is familiar with the fibonacci sequence and linear algebra would let us answer some interesting questions about this sequence everyone knows that you know start with 0 1 and keep on adding the previous two numbers to get the uh, next so it's like uh, after this it's 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 2 is 5 and so on this is the fibonacci sequence If you want to write it as a recurrence relation, so this is a sequence. This can be denoted say f k, and f k plus two is the sum of the previous two, which is f k plus one plus f k. Now, a question is, if I am interested in knowing what is f hundred. that's the question now we could do this manually or let a computer program do it but uh, these questions can be answered elegantly using linear algebra yeah algebra solution to this to this question use this diagonalization so to start with uh, i need a matrix so let's write down a system of equations let's have the system of equations like this you have fk plus 2 equals plus ak fk plus i'll add a dummy equation which is fk plus 1 is not changed this is unchanged now if i let the uh, parameter or the iterate denote this if i look at this pair how it evolves then if i want to write uk plus 1 as some matrix times uk what would that matrix be? think about this the answer is this simply because i mean this is equivalent to writing f k plus uh, 2 f k plus 1 is equal to 1 1 into k plus 1 f k and you would get this is f k plus 1 plus f k and this would be f k plus 1 which is the set of equations that we started with <coughs> so what we have is let uh, a denote this matrix one 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 zero. Then we start with the u naught, which is zero one, and then keep on applying a. You will get u one. You apply a again. You will get u two. You apply u a again. You will get e three, and so on. so if i write uk this is going to be a applied k times to u not and this is a solution to the system of equations uk plus 1 equals a uk now how do i find uh, 
u k for that uh, here is uh, some ideas in a general scenario. If you have this set of equations not just Fibonacci in a general scenario where a is n cross n and uh, u i or u k is n cross 1. Okay. Now, if a has if a is diagonalizable that is a has n independent eigenvectors, then start with u naught. So, if a u naught can be written as some linear combination of these eigenvectors, because these are <coughs> since x 1 to x n is a basis. Now, if I apply a on this, I would get uh, c 1 a x 1 plus blah 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 c n a x n, but these are eigenvectors. So, I would get c 1 lambda 1 x 1 plus so on until c n lambda n x n. Now, what is u k? u k is just a power k u naught. Now, if I apply uh, a again to this, so what would be a square u naught? a square u naught would be c 1 a of c 1 lambda 1 x 1 plus c n lambda n x n, which is nothing but c 1 lambda 1 square x 1 so on until c n lambda n square x n. So, if you extend this logic further, what you would get is u k is um, c 1 lambda 1 power k x 1 until c, c n lambda n power k x n. Now, we will come back to Fibonacci. Back to Fibonacci. So, here uh, to find u k, we need to check if a is 1 1 1 0 is diagonalizable. And find its eigenvectors if it is diagonalizable. So, what is A? A is 1 1 1 0. So, just stop. Uh, <coughs> stop the video now and calculate this on your own. What is the characteristic equation? Just lambda square minus lambda minus 1 equals 0. This means lambda 1 equals 1 plus square root 5 by 2. Lambda 2 equals 1 minus square root 5 by 2. This is high school mathematics uh, uh, calculating the root of a quadratic equation. We'll start with u naught. Now, what is u naught? u naught is f 1 f naught, which is the first two Fibonacci numbers 1 0. I want to write this as c 1 times x 1 plus c 2 times x 2, where x 1 and x 2 are the eigenvectors. So, what are the eigenvectors? Uh, let us find the eigenvectors of what is a minus lambda i? e minus lambda is 1 minus lambda 1 1 and minus lambda. And now, I want a minus lambda i x equals this x and this 
I want this to be equal to 0. So, let us take x 1 as lambda 1 1 and x 2 as lambda 2 1. What is a minus lambda 1 i into lambda 1 1? This is nothing but lambda 1 square minus lambda 1 minus 1 0. But we know, look at the characteristic polynomial. Lambda 1 is a square, lambda 1 is a root of lambda square minus lambda minus 1. So, this is nothing but 0 since lambda 1 is a root of lambda square minus lambda minus 1 equals 0. That is just above. Similarly, a minus lambda 2 i into lambda 2 1 equals 0. So, x 1 and x 2 are the eigen vectors corresponding to, to lambda 1 and lambda 2. Now, once we have this, we got the basis and we can write u naught as a linear combination. Now, writing u naught as a linear combination <coughs> of x 1 comma x 2. So, we want to do this. So, what is u naught which is same as first two Fibonacci numbers that you can check uh, it is like you want some constant times lambda 1 which is uh, if I substitute 1 plus square root 5 by 2. 1 plus square root 5 by 2 comma 1 plus some other constant times 1 minus square root 5 by 2. Now, you can just you know work backwards and find these as the constants. Just substitute and check if you are not convinced. Minus 1 by square root 5. Okay. If you just do it like this, you know the second term just cancels out 1 and 1. And the first term when you add these up, you will get 1. Which is half plus half and the other thing gets cancelled. Now, what is this mean? So, what is u k? u k is nothing but c 1 lambda 1 power k x 1 plus c 2 lambda 2 power k x 2, which we just saw before, which is the same as uh, which is like saying that f k plus 1 whatever u k was and f k, if I look at this is equal to the constant here is 1 by square root 5, lambda 1 is 1 plus square root 5 by 2 power k into x 1 is lambda 1 comma 1 plus 1 by square root 5 minus 1 by square root 5 1 minus square root 5 by 2 power k into lambda 2 1 minus square root 5 by 2 comma 1. In particular, <coughs> in particular I will get f k equals 1 by square root 5 1 plus square root 5 by 2 power k minus 1 by square root 5 1 minus square root 5 by 2 power k. You can check this. This is less than 1. 
so as k increases 1 minus square root 5 by 2 power k becomes negligible so so good enough approximation is you just take the first number of f k is you just approximate it by the first number 1 by square root 5 1 plus square root 5 by 2 power k now this is the same as or if you want the hundred number you can approximate it as 1 by square root 5 1 plus square root 5 by 2 power 100 which is uh, I think numerically 1 plus 1.618 power 100 that's what you get that's the 100 Fibonacci number so we can use uh, so the point of this uh, application is you can use diagonal visibility to infer uh, uh, you know interesting things about linear recurrence relations so the bottom line is of this application is diagonal visibility can be used to understand linear so the important thing is this recurrence relation was linear what do I mean by that if you go back to this equation here fk plus 1 with all this so here this is u k plus 1 is some linear function of u k but instead of this if I had a non-linear function all of this analysis breaks down so this application uh, uh, you know worked simply because you have a linear recurrence relation and we can use tools from linear algebra like diagonal visibility uh, to understand um, what happens uh, to this sequence or this relation after a large number of iterations. Okay, a uh, quick recap uh, before we end this uh, lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we looked at a concrete example that illustrates the utility of uh, diagonalization. Uh, in particular, uh, one can use ideas from diagonalization uh, of a matrix to solve linear recurrence relation. And we took a popular example, which is a Fibonacci sequence, uh, which is obviously a linear recurrence relation. So, for the Fibonacci sequence, we made up uh, a linear recurrence relation and that matrix underlying this uh, relation uh, we diagonalized and uh, using the diagonalized form of this matrix uh, which is uh, it's a 2 cross 2 matrix we could uh, get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this. Uh, using this we are able to come up with a very good approximation to higher order terms in the original Fibonacci sequence. For example, in this in this lecture, we saw how to calculate the 100th term in a Fibonacci sequence without uh, any brute force calculation by just uh, using diagonalization, calculating certain eigenvalues and eigenvectors and then using this information to calculate a higher order term. And this is a lot less uh, compute intensive than actually doing some brute force calculations uh, term by term. And uh, this idea extends to a more general case where you want to solve linear recurrence relation. Uh, if you want to solve a linear recurrence relation, then ideas from diagonalization are very, very useful. In the follow-up lectures, what we'll be looking at is uh, the more, I mean, what's coming next is the spectral theorem, uh, which shows that any real symmetric matrix uh, is diagonalizable and all its eigenvalues are real. Uh, a real symmetric matrix has only real eigenvalues. And uh, this uh, uh, important claim, which uh, constitutes the spectral theorem, is what we will be getting to in the next few lectures.